So I got to thinking, you know what this channel's missing? An intro. Hello again, I am Fallen Frog. Welcome back to Apog Gaming, and this week we're going to be talking about intros. So, long story short, before I made that intro for Apog Gaming, I knew I wanted to use 3D text. I wanted something simple, and I was actually looking into using After Effects to make that. I don't know how to use After Effects, but I was spending a lot of time Googling it, uh, doing YouTube tutorials, things like that, just trying to figure out the program because I've never used it before. And it was quickly becoming clear that this was something that I wouldn't be able to learn in a couple of days. Uh, I was going to need some more time. While I was doing all this searching and tutorial hunting, though, uh, I did come across a website called panzoid.com, and they've got a really cool clip maker tool that you can use to make intros. It does exactly what I was looking to do in After Effects, but it's so much easier because it's just a smaller, concentrated program. And it runs on a website, so you don't have to have a really good computer to be able to actually use it. It's all done through panzoid.com's side. It's all handled by their servers. So you really just need to have a web browser. You can make your own clips and edit them and all kinds of really cool things just right there. So I'm just going to be talking about the Clip Maker tool today because that's what I used for the Hip Hop Gaming intro. It was great. Within about a night, I was able to learn their program, just messing with it, doing little just building little projects, checking out their community gallery. And then the next day I started working on the Hip Hop Gaming intro and I had it done before the end of the night. It was pretty simple, pretty easy. One thing that's really cool about their website is they also have a community gallery. So you can go through and look at all the other creations that people are making. You can actually load those right up into Clipmaker and start editing them. You can just change the text to whatever you want render it out and you can use the preview templates that people make. So even if you're not very good with the program, uh, you can just change the text on some of the community templates, change it to whatever your channel is or whatever you want to advertise, render that out, and then boom, you've got a new intro. I would suggest making your own though, that way your channel will stand out from everyone else's. If you've got something that you made yourself from scratch, chances are no one else is going to have an intro that's exactly like that. So if you just take a look at Clipmaker and you compare it to programs like Blender or After Effects where you handle 3D objects, you can see it's actually very simplified. You've got a handful of buttons along the left-hand side. This is where your objects are located. This is where all your project settings. If you want to change the background, the scenery, and your 3D space, you can do that. Special effects, uh, camera controls audio, and then download your file. But that's pretty much it along the left-hand side. It's all pretty basic, pretty easy stuff. Depending on whichever button you're on, of course, will change what the, the actual menu is. And when you first load it up, you're just on the project tab. Uh, so you've got options for, you know, start a new project from scratch. You can load or save projects. Or you can upload your creation to the community gallery from here. And then if we move over to the right, what's really going to draw your attention is the preview window where you'll see your 3D space that you can work in. You can use the left click of your mouse to turn your 3D environment around. You can scroll to zoom in and out. Or you can use the right click to kind of drag. Even the timeline they have is a pretty simplified little timeline. You can scrub through it. You can, you can click and drag or click anywhere and move along the timeline. So as you scroll through the timeline, you'll see your frame number, you'll see your timestamp for where you are in that video. And then you've got, you know, your play button, your mute button. You do have a button for toggle render preview. And what that's going to do, if you click on your camera button on the left, you'll see where your camera is located within your scene. Now, of course, you can go through and move that wherever you want to. You can uh, move that along the X axis, the Y axis, or the Z axis. You want to make sure you're thinking three dimensionally here. You've got uh, you know, up, down, left, right, and then you've got forward and backward. You can easily just click on the green, red, or blue arrows, and you can kind of drag this around wherever you wherever you need it to be. But you'll notice that the pyramid that's coming out from your camera with those orange lines, those edges, those are the edges of your screen. So if you have any object that falls within that kind of cone-shaped pyramid, any objects, those will be represented in your scene when you do a render preview. If you click the eyeball icon next to your play button, it's going to show you exactly what your camera is looking at at that particular point on your timeline. If you're doing this with a blank document that you haven't added any objects to, you're only going to see a black screen. 
So if you throw an object in there first on your stage, you'll get a better idea. Speaking of objects, they're really easy. If you just click on the object button, if you click on that, you'll have a list of different types of objects to bring into your scene. It had different shapes. They've got boxes, cylinders, rectangles, you know, circles, spheres, donuts, wires, different things like that. You can also add custom 3D text. We can see it's defaulted to Clip Maker, but if we just select this in our object menu, and here we can go in and change the text to something like a pog. You can also play with color settings, position, rotation, scale. You can have the object be a single color. You can have it be a texture file. You can add images. There's also some stock textures like wood and metal and things like that. But as long as you've got an object in your scene, once you click on your camera button, you'll see where your camera is in relation to that object. And if you hit the render preview, you'll see what the camera is seeing. This is also what your viewers will see when you render out that video. Once you learn how to put bring in the objects and change their properties, then it becomes a matter of just animating those, which is as simple as changing the properties at different points in your timeline. You can also add lights as objects and then animate those as well. You could have a light that's over on the left hand side of your text. As you go through the timeline, that light moves, moves across the text. So you'll have a shining effect, different things like that. That's different ways that you can play around with your 3D little space. There's also all kinds of built in camera effects that you can enable. Once you hit the FX button, it brings up your list of different special effects that you can apply. You can have everything start off black and white or gray and then just in a flash, add a bunch of color. You can do something like that. You can also do fish islands, glitch effects, static. Each of these effects is added to your camera. So once you render it out, you'll see those effects taking place. Uh, you'll see those in the render preview as well. The last thing you're going to want to add to your intro uh, is music. You're going to want to add some audio. I highly suggest uh, checking out YouTube's audio library so you don't get copyright strikes or you know look for some free to use sounds that you can find on the internet or, or if you have the gift make your own music you know sadly that's not one of my traits regardless of where the music is coming from you can add it into your project very easily just add your audio file once you've got your audio they've also got a couple of different options you can offset the audio to uh, wherever you want in that file so let's say you've got a 30 second audio clip and what you need starts at five seconds into the you know into that audio track you can offset that by five seconds and that's what will play whenever your video starts basically when they run through that video it's going to start your audio at five seconds pretty simple pretty easy you can also apply fades and pans uh, and play with the volume settings and that all works just like objects you know just like your camera it runs along the timeline you can change those values over the course of your video so if you want your music to be louder at the beginning and maybe fade out, all of, you can do all of that. It's really simple, really easy. The best piece of advice is just going to be to play around with all of this stuff. Uh, get a feel for it yourself. Like I said, check out the community creations because there's some really cool stuff that people have made. When you find a video you like, it's really easy to download it. You've got some options for how you want to render this. You can have a faster render. So if you're in a bit of a hurry, you can get your video rendered a little bit quicker at the cost of some quality. Or if you want the best quality, you can have a slower render. What this really means is it's just going to be how long you're going to have to keep that tab open. And then once it's done, you're given an option to download it. It saves it on your computer and you're good to go. And I will mention that there's two formats that you can save your clips as, .mkv and .webm. Personally, I just rendered it as an MKV. So I just convert that MKV over to an MP4. Once you have the MP4 file, you're ready to bring that over into your editing software. It's easy enough to use this for, you know, just a basic intro but you really have a little 3D scene that you can use to make whatever kind of footage you want. So there you go. I uh, just wanted to show you guys a really cool piece of software that I discovered. I had no idea Panzoid existed and that, you know, this was like a thing that you could use. I was trying to learn After Effects, which by all means, if you know After Effects, use it. Use what you're good with. Hopefully you're able to get some use out of that. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them down below. You can hit up me personally over on my social media channels or, you know, whatever. Make sure you find me, uh, Fallen Frog. You know, I'll be happy to try to help you guys out. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button. I'll leave one of those over there for you as well. YouTube gives you like 20 seconds for your end cards. You want to make sure you have something on the end of your video that takes up enough time so that you can have these annotations and, you know, clickables uh, stay on screen. So that's what I'm doing. I'm sticking around so you have something to click on. Thanks for watching. Bye.